Good evening and welcome to another episode of the Coach Derek Barrow Show. I am your host, Justin Robinson. Like always, I have the man himself, Coach Derek Barrows. How you doing, Coach? Good, good. How are you? I'm all right, living. Huh? I'm glad this, the week is over. Yeah. All the festivities is done. And yeah. it's back to regular life. Back to the joy. <laughs> regular life. Well, um, nice two of us. <laughs> Uh, you guys played in, in another close game uh, with another chance to, to make a comeback at the end of the game um, against another tough opponent. What's your thoughts on how the team played this past weekend? Well, I thought we dug ourselves a hole um, that was a little bit too deep to get out of in the first half. Uh, it almost seems like we were... Um, I, I don't even have a word for the way we played the first half. Um, and and we came out the second half with a little bit more energy, but by that time we had already kind of dug a hole for ourselves that we couldn't fight our way back out of. Uh, yeah, you guys trailed uh, 27-0 in the third quarter. Um, you brought Marquise Pickett in. Mm -hmm. um, his, on his first play, he threw a 30-yard bomb to Aaron mm -hmm. Thomas for a touchdown. Um, at what what led to the decision of putting Pickett in? Well, I think uh, Coach Gaines is just was trying some something new. Uh, I think, uh, again, Ruben was struggling a little bit, and he's decided to just try try uh, pick it to, to see if we could get some offensive energy, and uh, we did. Uh, he went, Pickett went 7-15 seven, seven for 84 yards and threw two touchdowns. Mm -hmm. uh, one touchdown was a 30-yard bomb on the fourth and seven. Right. Um, how much confidence did, did his play bring to the rest of the team? Well, we uh, we knew that Pickett could play, um, uh, but obviously, when you know when you uh, when you have a first team quarterback, you want to you want to roll with you know wanna, you want to roll with the guy that kind of got you there. And but we we always felt that uh, we've had confidence in him. That that was never the issue. It just uh, Ruben was always a little bit more consistent, so we decided to go with Ruben. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, it was only one game, and uh, Ruben went eight for eight of fifteen for seventy-five yards. But mm -hmm. he struggled with two turnovers uh, right. this week. However, last week he was voted newcomer of the week mm -hmm. for Saya. Uh, will, will for his play against Tuskegee, will will will, will the homecoming game uh, like change the rotation a little bit at the quarterback spot? Well, we we don't know yet, um, but. Um, of course, we want uh, our quarterbacks to be as consistent as possible. Uh, not so much having, uh, you know, good or great games one week, and uh, and we've fallen off the following week. So, if there's one position that we need consistency, and that's the quarterback position, and right now we're struggling. In, you know. Yeah. Um, do you do you feel that that with Pickett? With the game he played last week, do you, do you feel that he gives more options for the, no. for the next upcoming game? No, I don't feel that. I feel that he came in and did a great job for us. And if I felt that he, he uh, gives more options now, then he should have been our starting quarterback in the beginning. <laughs> um, Holiday had another, mm -hmm. another um, good game rushing. Mm -hmm. He uh, ran for 125 yards and a touchdown. Um, do you feel that as the game went on, his play kind of opened it up for the passing game? Well, you know, that's kind of Marcus's M.O. You know, he kind of starts slow and he kind of get, gets it going. And and I, I, I love to watch that kid run. You know, uh, he excites our offense. Uh, he runs hard. Uh, he's a great kid, by the way, too. So uh, you, you can't ask for a better, better kid. Were you finding more balance with the, with the offensive attack, with the passing game? And the running game going? Yeah. Absolutely. But when you're behind 27 to nothing, <laughs> you know, it's going to be kind of hard for you to be balanced. Um, Isaac, I'm um, Isaac, Aaron Thomas, uh, Amari Hampton, they all combined for 12 receptions, 144 yards, and two touchdowns. Um, both the touchdowns were 30 yards. Uh, do you, how, how do you, Feel about your receivers play Saturday? Well, I thought they played well. Um, obviously, we didn't play well enough to win as a as a group. Um, so uh, you know, it's kind of hard to single out individuals uh, and not the team. Right. So uh, we just try to focus more on the team and the team goals and the team concept, opposed to individual receptions and catches. You know, um, we just we just kind of waited too late to turn this flip the switch on. 
Yeah, with their play, did with did it, with their play Saturday um, in the fourth quarter, did that allow you to stretch the field a little bit more to give Marcus a Holiday a little bit more uh, room to, you know, run? No, not really. I mean, they they were doing the same thing uh, the first quarter. They were doing the fourth quarter. Uh, it wasn't about them. It was about us. Our inability to move the ball the first half. Uh, we gave up big plays in the secondary the first half. Um, so it, it's never about who you play. It's always about how, how you, you play. play. Uh, the game started off uh, with Lane Force Langston and punt, um, but they recovered a, the punt. Uh, Langston scored on a touchdown and then rec rec recovered the kickoff. Uh, what do you think of, about the, the call on the punt and how much uh, psychological effect did that have on the rest of the they have on the team and the crowd in the beginning of the game. Uh, I, I didn't think it, I didn't think the ball hit off either one of our players. Uh, as for the psychological effect it had on us, I have no idea. Um, but I, you know, after going back and watching, I still don't think that the ball hit off any of our players. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, watching that, I was, when they called it, I was looking like. Yep. Yeah, I mean. But. Um, it happened. It was a lesson. Right. Uh, uh, you guys gave up 347 yards and 27 points in the game. But most of that was in the first half. Uh, it, it seemed like the team came out in the second half with a whole different agenda, a whole different chip on their shoulder. Um, what did you say to them to ch kind of change things around in that second half? Well, in a, in a, in a politically correct way, we, I just explained to them that we can continue status quo and get 80 points put on us or come back the second half like, you know, like we can go out here and play like we know we know how to play. Um, uh, I, I, I've never, this, you know, it was so disappointing to see us play as sluggish as we played the first half. And, uh, and uh, it, it was, it, it was very disappointing to be honest. The, <clears throat> the defense held uh, Langston to um, seven points in that second half. Um, what was different about the way they played in the first half compared to the second? Well, we we played with a little bit more fire the first on uh, the second half. Uh, again, like I said, we came out very sluggish, uh, very lethargic, act like we didn't even want to be there uh, most of the time. Uh, and you know, second half uh, we came out with fire and energy, and uh, and I think that if we'd have came out and played like that from the beginning, uh, the score could have been possibly different. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with the second segment of the Coach Derrick Barrow Show. We got more in store for you guys. The music of the Harry Fraud. Lights, camera, action. The Mass Communication Department needs help. All students are welcome to help out with the production of the Coach Burroughs Show every Monday. Any help would be appreciated. And welcome back to the Coach Derek Burroughs Show. Um, does playing two close games back to back uh, take? How do you go move forward after playing? You have two. The last two games you played. The last two games at home. Um, they were two close games. How do you move forward from that after playing, after almost winning the last two games? You move forward by starting practice at 3.30 on Tuesday like you do every other Tuesday. <laughs> and you refocus uh, on uh, Fort Valley uh, State University opposed to focusing on our previous opponent. Right. And that's, and that's what you do when you win or, or you lose. You, you move forward. You 
you go on and and get ready for the next game. Do you use this near comeback um, against um, Langston as as kind of fuel to the upcoming game against Fort Valley? Uh, not really. Uh, um, you know, I, I'd like to think that uh, the opportunity to play college football should fuel their fire. The opportunity to, to you know, make a difference and, and be a part of something special uh, fuels their fire. Now, with that being said, that's not the case with all players. Uh, so uh, there is no moral victories with me. Uh, so close games, one point games, uh, I, I can't relate to moral victories. This week you, you go back on the road, you've been home for three weeks. Um, your record is better on the road than it is at home. So are you looking forward to using this road trip to kind of like restart? The to be honest, I am because, um, you know, I'm I, uh, trying to figure out why our guys came out so sluggish and and you know this is kind of typical when we play at home because most most teams put their guys up in a hotel the night before whereas we got homecoming all these festivities are going on and, and uh you you i'd like to think my players were at home but realistically they probably weren't so um you know it's just um you know it's just it's uh, you know it's, it's probably not the correct situation to put them, put them in where where we can allow them to be all out all times a night a night before a game, right? But it is what it is. Um, you guys beat Fort Valley last year in a close game at home, ten to seven. Uh, does winning last year give you a little confidence on going into the game, or does it mm -hmm. like give Fort Valley like a little chip on their shoulder um, to play you guys this week? Well, it pro it could possibly be do both. Um, you know, nobody likes to lose the lane. Um, so it could possibly give them a chip, but uh, hopefully it'll give us a chip also. Um, so, uh, but what, what we've done against Fort Valley last year has no significance whatsoever in the outcome of this game this year. So. Um, they have a, Fort Valley has a record of two and three, and they are. Three and three. Three and three, and they are two and one. In the Syed, mm -hmm. um, they are tied for the for the lead in the Eastern Division of the Syed. Based on the, on on you guys' performance over the last two weeks against tough opponents, how do you feel you can stack up against Fort Valley? Well, I, I you know I, I sure hope so. We I sure hope we can. Um, they have a good quarterback, very poised, very patient quarterback. They have some great receivers, um, and they have a great football team. Uh, good coach, been knowing him for a long time. We're from the same hometown. Uh, so they have a great program. Uh, they just spent about $10 million to renovate their stadium uh, over the last couple of years, uh, doing some great recruiting and some great things at Fort Valley. So we have all the, the respect for them in the world. In their last two games, they have rushed for um, a little under 200 yards and uh, are averaging 140 yards per game. Um, how will your defense contain their running game? Yeah, we try to figure that out every week. Um, uh, I hope we do better than we did last week uh, uh, and a week or the week before. Uh, even though I thought uh, our kids play hard, uh, I think we got to play harder uh, in order to beat Fort Valley, particularly at home. So, You guys, uh, your defense seems a little more comfortable now. Um, and with the, their their offense being a little balanced, averaging um, a roughly under 200 yards passing, um, do you feel that your defense can slow down their offense? I sure hope so. That's if uh, if if we can't, we got it's a long night. Um, you are both. You are playing another team that forces an average of um, a fumble a game, mm -hmm. fumble and a half a game. Um, but only have two interceptions all year. And you guys like to throw the ball a little bit. So mm -hmm. uh, does that have an effect on how you approach this week? No. We, we're, not, we're not a – I wouldn't call us a, th a passing football team. Uh, um, 
I think we do better when we run the ball first and then throw the football. But I would, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't dare put us in the category of a passing football team. They're they're giving up 200 yards per game rushing and 186 per per game passing. Wow, uh, you take you take each game week week to week and as a player game. Um, what, what what would change the way you prepare this week? Um, well, as opponents change, the game plan changes. Uh, you never keep the same game plan for one opponent as mm-hmm. you know to the next game. So it's just depend mm-hmm. on what Fort Valley does well and what we feel like we need to try to come up with to stop whatever they do well. And that's the game plan. Um, so game plans change from week to week. Yeah. Uh, opponents have scored 85% of the time in the red zone against Fort Valley. 76 of, of those successful attempts has been for touchdowns. Is that something you feel that your office can take advantage of this week? Well, th- that's really kind of the game plan of every, every offense. You know, you, you want a 100% score in the red zone. Uh, once you get inside the 20 yard line, you know, you, you got to put points on the board. And uh, that's, that's just kind of the rule of thumb. Uh, for the offense, you know, you get in the red zone, you got to score. What kind of improvements are you looking forward to? This uh, um, first of all, I'm looking for our guys to get a good night's rest before the game. That might help. And uh, hopefully we can come out and play a little bit better. There you have it. We'll be right back with the Coach Derek Burrow Show. Why are you doing all this speeding? What time you gotta be there, huh? You ain't James Bond. You ain't some GTA character. You are not on Fast and Furious, okay? This is real life and you are a normal pedestrian. Look at a speed sign, all right? Turn off that radio. Pay attention so you don't end up killing somebody like this fool almost did to me. This message is sponsored by Lane College. The power of potential. And remember, drive carefully. on a journey with us to a world connecting you to your college. With a world that is changing at a rapid pace and is technology driven, the Mass Communication Department provides valuable news and information to the public, providing commentary, entertaining through film, radio, television. You can count on the Mass Communications Dragons to keep you on your toes and in the know of the latest activities going on on campus on all social sites. WLCD, the voice of the Dragons. And welcome back to the Coach Derek Barrow Show. Coach Derek Barrow Show. Yeah. <laughs> um, every week um, we have audience questions. You can ask um, questions for Coach Derek Barrow to answer. Um, you can contact us at broadcast at langcollege.edu or on our social media outlets on Facebook at Lang College Athletics and on Instagram at Lang Athletics. Be sure to DM us or message us whatever questions you have. Um, so, uh, the first question is, Brendan asks, are, after a close game, after a close game against Tuskegee and a near comeback on homecoming against Langston, there is some excitement on campus about the team. Do you feel that the excitement of the fans will help the team? I sure hope so. Um, unfortunately, uh, we're on, our, on, on the road this week, so our fans won't be there, but, um, you know, hopefully uh, those close games uh, eventually got to fall into our favor. Uh, so we just gotta we just gotta stay focused and keep playing hard, and hopefully those so, some of those close games that we've been losing will be in our favor. Um, Corbin asks, uh, which which way do you prefer to lead, hands on, or do you like to delegate? Well, I'm both. Um, uh, but I think when you when you have uh, capable people, you don't necessarily need to be a uh, need to be a um, uh, you don't need to be a person that that's always around. Uh, but I I, I, th- I think I've been kind of both. I'm, I'm a hands-on defensive coach. I'm kind of a stand back offensive guy. You know, I've, I've hired some capable people to run the offense, and uh, you know. 
kind of let, let them do their jobs. Sierra asks, what do you say or think when you see something go against your team? Well, um, you know, I think uh, I don't I don't I'm not one of those guys that think that every call that's against us, we didn't do. Um, now, what 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 really bothers me <clears throat> more than anything in the world is personal foul penalties. You know, you, you, you fumble, you throw interceptions. That's a part of the game. But personal foul penalties that just gets under my skin. And to me, it's a lack of focus. And uh, it's a selfish, to me, it's selfish. It's a selfish penalty. And it doesn't, it, it does nothing for the team. Um, I think we asked this a couple weeks ago, but the fans want to know again. Uh, what is your typical pregame and postgame routine? Uh, I don't have one. Um, uh, I don't have a, I don't have, I still don't have one. <laughs> I've I, I thought about that. Uh, what do I do? What do I do all the time? I don't, I don't have anything I do. All, <laughs> I have nothing I do all the time. Nothing. Just something different every time? Yeah. I mean, you know, when I, I, you know pre-game, I'm, I think I'm pretty laid back. Now, when the game starts, I'm a little bit different. But I try to keep a level head because I know I got to keep a head to call the plays. Right. So I'm, I'm never, you know, I'm never emotionally charged before a game. Or I, I, I never give our guys that fire and brimstone speech before the game, you know, because when you play on emotions, it's very temporary. Yeah, it is. Um, but, yeah, it do seem like it would be cool laid back on the field. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sitting there observing, yeah. watching. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hunter asks, uh, what are the top priorities in your life outside of football? Outside of football, being a good father, uh, trying to be the best man I can be. Uh, to my children, uh, you know, it's important that uh, that I I try my best to be a, a good father and a and a good defender and a provider for my for my daughter, because uh, I know that you know the father the father is the first man a woman knows, right? And whatever message that the father leaves with his daughter, that's the message he she takes to the world. So be careful. Uh, of what you teach your children. So we're, we're the first man in, in our daughter's life. So uh, I try to be very careful of, of the man I am, particularly around my daughter. That's a good way to put it. Uh, Colin asks, how do you promote positive energy when things aren't going well? You know what? Uh, when, when, you know, every day, not every day, but the last couple of weeks we've been, you know, we've been, Dropping games, close games, and and you know every day I hit the field on Tuesday, you know I, in my mind I say it's important to make sure you keep your head up, uh, you keep your spirits going, never let your players uh, see you. Even though I do feel uh, I, I I get down about things, I'm human, but I, it's important right. that I never let my players see that. Uh, so uh, it's important that I always keep a up, upbeat spirit uh, when I hit that field. Uh, that. Uh, I got to show them that uh, we've moved on. We, it's time to move on to the next game. Uh, Dax asks, uh, where do you hope to see the program here in, the, in five years? Well, uh, in five years, I would like for somebody else to be sitting in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like for somebody else to be sitting in this chair, and, and, uh, and I'll be old Coach Burroughs, the old AD uh, at Lane. You know, I'll be just running the athletic department. So. I, I don't know if I want to go into five years of coaching, five more years of coaching. So you, 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 it's about, you about to turn on your coaching hat and just be the athlete. Well, I mean, five years. I can't see, my, I can't see us interviewing five years from now. No, 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 no. no. I, I'd like to be the athletic director and let somebody else do this. Uh, uh, Tristan asks, what was your previ previous experience uh, taught you about coaching? What has your previous experience taught you about coaching, um, and do you think that it helps you handle players better? Well, uh, my previous experience uh, is 20 plus years of coaching, you know. Um, so every year I've coached, I've learned more and more about the game. And the, the biggest thing in terms of when it comes down to players, it's never, it's never an, about just X's and O's. You know, you got to develop a personal relationship with your players. 
and they got to know that that you care, you genuinely care about them. Now, I'm hard on our kids, I tell you that now, but I think if you ask them, does, does Coach Burroughs really care about you guys? And then most of them will say yes. And the ones that the ones that say no, they, they probably be lying on me, but they know they know I care about them. It's just, uh, I think it's important that- uh, You show them a little tough love. Show tough love, yeah. Yeah, tough love gets you a long way. Uh, Grant asks, who was your favorite football player growing up? Favorite player, Mel Blunt. And I know you guys have no idea who Mel Blunt is, but he was a former Pittsburgh Steeler, Southern University grad. Uh, I thought Mel was the next thing next to ice water. He was 6'4", 220 pound cornerback. So uh, I wanted to be just like Mel Blunt. So. Um, Lindsey asks, do you think of yourself as a role model to players and students here? At you know Lake? what, I sure hope so. I sure hope so. Because uh, if, if I'm not set an example for our, our student athletes, then uh, then I'm, I'm not doing all of my job. It's, it's, again, it's more than just X's and O's. It can't be just about football. Right. You know, I, I hope uh, my kids never see me with my pants down. I hope they never see me, uh, yeah, that's you, know, cool. you know, walking around campus <laughs> using negative language. You know, I do it on the field sometimes. <laughs> but, that's expected. Yeah, but I, I hope that my, I just hope that who I am sets the example for our kids, yes. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We, that was another episode of the Coach Derek Burrow Show. I am your host, Justin Robinson. And this is the man himself, Coach Derek Burrows. And we'll holler at you next weekend.